Hi, my name is Trey Bremer. I'm with Mitel. Today I'm going to go over the 6900 series of phones with you. Make sure you know how everything operates and all the features that are kind of hidden within the phone. So you'll know your way around it pretty well and you can also help others who might struggle. A couple of things to start off with. Uh, there is a feature on this phone called hot desking. Uh, hot desking is the ability to go to any phone within the county uh, and log yourself into the phone and take that phone over. It would have all the buttons you've designed for it. It would have your extension number. If someone called you, it would ring that phone. So if you're working on a project or something, it's a feature that's available to you. If you're not, uh, and you really aren't ever going to leave the old location you're at, you could just leave it and never touch it after you log in initially. Uh, probably they're going to go around and log those phones in for you, but if you ever find yourself logged out and you want to know how to get back in, uh, we're going to go through that. But couple things on that is the hot desk extension and your voicemail pin are going to be 1111. So four ones will get you into both voicemail and allow you to hot desk until you change your voicemail passcode. So when you set up your voicemail the first time, that'll also change the pin number that you use to hot desk into the phone. So that way you have one number for everything. Uh, so you'll want to pick, pick a number that you remember and, and log in. And as we go through, you'll kind of understand better. If you accidentally dial 911, uh, don't hang up. <clears throat> Stay on the line. Even though you think you may have beat the 911 operator picking up the phone, uh, it will still send out your uh, address. And it may not be as big of a problem with a county, but uh, we always recommend it. Um, a one has been added to your existing extensions for the most part. There has been some new extensions added. Uh, so you'll notice that if you knew someone whose extension was just an example, 503, uh, there's going to be one in front of it, so it'll be 1503, that kind of thing. Uh, so you'll kind of get a, the handle of it pretty quick. There are three styles of phones that uh, we're offering, and you guys actually have at least one of each of these styles. What I'm going to do today to make it kind of easier is I'm going to go through the 50, uh, I'm sorry, the 6930 phone, which is the middle of the line, because uh, you have a few of those, and you also have a lot of 20s. But the 20s and the 30s are very similar. The only diff big, biggest difference is, is there's a little more buttons on the 30 than the 40. Uh, so as I go through, the information will pertain to both. But this is what you're looking at here is a 20. And you'll notice that it has a little silver key here, this navigation key. And it has one series of buttons on one side of the display and then a series underneath. When we go to the 30, the only really difference is, is there's an extra button below. Uh, that's for soft keys, you know, changing dynamics of the phone. We'll kind of go through those. And then there's an additional series of buttons on the uh, opposite side. So it's kind of splits the screen in two. Um, otherwise, all the other buttons are going to be exactly the same. And as we go through on the 30, I'll let you know if anything doesn't apply to the 20. So if you happen to have a 20, because really they do the same thing, um, then you'll know, you know, there's a few differences, but very, very few, mostly about <clears throat> real estate buttons up that you can program. The last phone we have is a, and you guys have very few of these, if any, uh, these are the 6940 phones. The biggest difference on these are they operate the same way, except it's touch screen. So you don't need that little round navigation key. Uh, you'll just hit the button or or uh, kind of move the screen side to side or that sort of thing. Um, otherwise, the only big difference is you'll notice that these uh, these dynamic keys that have buttons below on are up top, and then your display is at the very top. So it, it'll be a really easy transition regardless of what style phone you have on how you're going to uh, be able to operate it. So you should be able to sit at any desk anywhere with any of the three types of phones and be able to make a call, get a call, and go into the settings. This is a navigation key. This is found on the 6920 and the 6930. The way that key works is the very center of the button, or the little uh, silver key there, is select. And the outside ring is uh, the ability to go left, right, up, or down. And this comes into play a couple different places. One of the places is going to be going from page to page. I'll show you what I mean by that. But when you're in your phone, 
Uh, you have multiple pages that you can access to have buttons to program, as well as you'll use that navigation key when you're looking at things like your contacts or if you're looking at your call history. So those are the kind of things that you will uh, use this navigation key for. Anything you need to kind of scroll around the, the display. So I'll show you exactly when they come to play, but I want to make sure you knew how that worked. Hot desking into the phone. So <clears throat> again, this is a feature that's available to you, but maybe you don't use it. I sit in a home office, so I don't use, I never log in anywhere else. But if I was to go to my corporate office and I wanted to go in a conference room and take over that phone for the day, I certainly could. And so can you. So hot desking is a feature that everyone has, uh, and you'll be able to uh, use that feature whenever you want. But generally, if you don't want to use it or it's a feature you won't use, you just leave your phone alone, you're good to go. Let's show you how you'll log into it. So when a phone needs to be hot desked into, you're going to notice that um, number one is at the very top, the extension number will have a pound in it as a second octet. So it'll be your, like in your guys' case, it would be one pound and whatever the extension number is. You'll also notice it says locked in the center display. And this goes for any of the style of phones. Also on these soft keys, these more dynamic keys down in the gray area on the bottom, it's only gonna be offering you hot desk. Now when a phone's in this status, um, the only things you can do is call 911 or dial zero for the operator. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to dial an extension. Uh, you're not gonna be able to call out. Uh, it's basically locked up. Some people use this, you know, um, some companies will log out of their phones at night. So I guess if the cleaning crew came through, they didn't want people to make a long distance call that would block that. So um, you can see where it might come into play different places. So the way we're going to deal with logging into the phone is we're going to press the key uh, down at the bottom that corresponds with where it says hot desk, where I have it kind of uh, kind of a little square around it, yellow square. When you press that hot desk key, it'll then ask you to log in. You'll press the login key and you'll put in your extension, the new one you have, the one and whatever the extension number used to be. Or if your extension numbers change, you may want to look at an extension list to make sure. But you'll hit, you'll log in, you're putting in your extension number without the pound. Uh, you will notice that the extension number up top will mimic your real extension number except it'll have a pound in it. So if your extension number is 1500, the hot desk extension will be one pound 500. So you can kind of look at that to kind of see if you have what your extension is as well. But we're gonna hit login and then dial our extension and the display is gonna tell us to enter your extension number. And then it's going, we put in our extension, in this case it's 5200, which kind of mimics what's there and we'll hit enter. Then it'll ask for the pin, and this is where that four ones comes into play. One, 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 one. That'll work the first time you go in or until you set up your voicemail. When you set up your voicemail, if you use zero, one, two, zero, or something like that, then that'll also be your login for your phone. So those two will be the same. Once you change it in one place, it's changed in the other. Once you put in the pin, one, 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 initially and hit enter, It'll log you into your phone and you'll know you're logged into your phone now. Here's an example of it because the extension number will no longer have a pound on it up top. And also there's a little fella here who uh, shows up uh, as a display. There's a couple little uh, displays up in the very top. It's just letting you know the little boxes are letting you know that you're connected to the network. They should always remain green. And then this is just an example. If you missed four calls, you'd have this little ricochet arrow. Uh, but <clears throat> you know, I, they may or may not be there for you when you log in. The other thing you'll notice uh, to let you know that you're logged in is it'll ask you to log out. So that log out buttons, if you ever wanted to log your phone out, if you go to another desk, let's just say you didn't know you're going to log in somewhere. Let's just say you're in the conference room and you'd like to log into the conference room. You don't have to log out. You can just log into the conference room or hit log out at the conference room to log yourself in. As soon as you hit log out, it'll say, do you want to switch users and you can put in your own extension. So you really don't need the log out button. The only time it's really a big deal to you would be, um, if you're trying to take over a phone that's already logged in. So if I go to the conference room, the conference room is 1200, then I would hit log out. It would ask me to put in my extension, then my pin, and I could get into that phone. So I'd hit log out to get rid of the conference room phone and temporarily take it over for myself. 
So that's what that is. Any common area phone, like a conference room or something like that, if you hot desk into it, uh, like you say you use the phone for the day and you need to log back in, the conference room phone back in, uh, you'll, it's always going to be 1111. Anything without an ex, a, a voicemail will always stay one, four ones. So it'll make it nice and easy for you. Okay. Once you're all logged in, this is what your main display is going to look like. We're going to kind of look at it, start at the top, work our way down. Uh, I showed you at the very top where you see 5200 on this display. That's where it's going to display your extension number. Uh, not to be confused with the information for redial, but whatever numbers are there, or phone numbers or extension numbers for redial, you'll see. So it always reside at the very top. The next actually two buttons down, the first one says my phone and the other one says line two. Those are your inbound call line appearances. So uh, all the calls, first call in will always come to where it says my phone. That's your line one. So you'll see that when a call comes in though, it'll change where it says my phone to the uh, extension number that's dialing you or the outside uh, phone number. It also will display the outside phone number in the uh, center of the display. Line two is if I'm on a call and another call comes in, I have the ability to go ahead and grab that call uh, by placing the call on hold. I'll show you the hold button. On these phones, you don't have to hit the hold button. If, a, if you're on a call and another call comes in, you can just hit the line two button. It'll automatically put the first caller on hold. So it saves you, saves you a step, but I will show you uh, in a little bit here where the hold button is. Then you'll notice the third key down is a blank. That's real estate available to you. So you could put an extension number there. You could put an outside number that you dial a lot or a feature. There's a couple features that aren't represented, but not many. Um, but that could go there as well. The fourth button down is call record. It may also just say record. Um, it just depends on how it's set. But either way, what that does is it gives you the ability to re record your conversation when somebody when you're on a live call so if i'm on a call with somebody and say someone is being threatening or someone's complimentary that's a good reason to record also uh you could hit the button it'll record from the moment you press the button on uh so it doesn't go back in time so if someone says a bunch of stuff and then you don't hit record until the end you're going to miss it so as soon as you hit the record it'll record that conversation and it drops it to your voicemail like a voicemail message so you can access it listen to it again send it to somebody else within the organization, that sort of thing. So that's your record button. <clears throat> Next button down is your page. Now this button may also change. Um, uh, the person who's programming is looking at it, but generally we use this key. You have two page zones. Um, you'll hit page and hit zone one. I believe it's like the courthouse and then uh, overhead. And then two would be the outside areas or something. So if you had an emergency, you guys could page. You know, I don't think you guys page a lot there from conversations I had, but that's available to you. Uh, that may change a little bit and we'll make sure our notes sent out. Uh, we were thinking maybe we do two page buttons so it makes it a little easier. You don't have to know the zone, you know, overhead and, and through the phones or something like that. So we'll see what we come up with uh, still being looked at. D and D is do not disturb. Do not disturb shuts off your phone for inbound call traffic, sends everything straight to voicemail. Or if you're in a group where it rings your phone and then moves to another one, it skips you. So if you're gonna go to lunch, let's just say you're in a department, like let's just say the clerks are, and a call comes in, if I put myself in do not disturb, it just skips by me and goes to the next person on the list rather than ring my phone a bunch of times and then moves to the next person. So it's a nice habit to get into, especially if you go out of the office and there's other people kind of grabbing your phones to make yourself into do not disturb or set yourself up as do not disturb. If anyone dials your extension directly or if anyone um, calls a direct dial number to your phone, then it will go straight to voicemail. But anything that's like generic, like courthouse, or clerks or any of that kind of thing where it rings multiple phones in the office, that'll just skip you. If you need clarification on that, uh, you know, please kind of talk to one of the other people in the office. Now, both the um, 6920s, which there's a lot of, and the 6930s are basically going to be set up all this way. You'll notice there's another set of buttons on the other side with little slots. There's six buttons there. That's if you have a 30, then that gives you additional buttons that you can program. You'll also notice 
down under where it says redial, it says redial in the center when the phone is idle, and you have a redial soft key, which is in that gray area. That gray area we refer to as soft keys. What that really means is that it's a dynamic area that changes depending on the conditions of the phone. When the phone is idle, it gives you the ability to log out of the phone or make a redial a number that you had dialed. Um, when you're on a call, it'll give you offerings like conference and add a person like a uh, or a transfer. Um, so it gives you, and I'll show you as we go along how that's going to change and offer you different things. So those buttons below will change depending on the conditions of the phone. And a lot of the features are, reside in that gray area, like transfer, conference uh, resides in there, uh, redial re resides in there. And, and you'll see when we're setting up things like conference call, the ability to add more people show up in there. So that, that area stays like that. Just above that, you see a, a little blue dot and a little clear dot. That's just indicating to you that there's multiple pages on this phone. So you have, um, if you have a 30, a 6930 phone, you have seven blank spots that you could program other people in the office if you want to call them really quick. You could program an outside number, you know, home, doctor, whatever you want. Um, <clears throat> but you can also use your silver key to scroll uh, if you're facing the screen like I am over to the right hand side and it would change to the second set of keys like this and then those are all blank so those are available for you to program as well so you have a little more real estate on these phones if you need some more people uh, 40s have even more uh, there's not a lot of those out there but there are some more buttons available the way to program a button on these phones it's a lot like your uh, radio is in your car you just hold the button down you hold the button next to the blank space uh, down for a few seconds, and then it'll pop up this little program key display, and then I can label it, you know, with whatever name I want to put in there. And then using my uh, navigation key, I scroll down. I can put in a phone number or uh, an extension number, and I can mark things as private. Private means that it won't show the number, just the label. So if I want to put my cell phone or my home phone number on my desk phone, but I don't want people going past my desk and seeing my home phone number. I would go ahead and mark it as private and people won't see that. Um, now, this is important to note that <clears throat> let's just say you need a button on your phone that shows other people when they're on the phone. So I want an extension number and I want to be able to pick up their phone or whatever like that. That has to be programmed within the system. So any button you create here will just be dial only. So if I put your extension on there, when I hit it, it'll dial, but I won't see when you're on and off the phone. I won't be able to pick up a call for you using that key. Um, so if you have a special need for that, you know, write it down. And then when we cut you guys over, move you over to the new system, it may be something you want to put out there and we can either program or, or whoever's programming there locally can work on it for you. You can see it says uh, things like other features and more. More is just information about the phone. So if I scroll down, uh, speed call is what we're looking at here. That's what they consider you doing a uh, outside number or an internal extension. Other features are going to be things like phone lock. It just locks your phone. Remember earlier we were talking about logging out of the phone. You could put a lock key, which would lock, and you would need a code to re-enter the phone if you guys had problems with like um, cleaning staff and stuff, dialing. Call forward always is the ability. You can put a button on your phone to set up where you can hit a button on and off. And you, we can, I'll show you where you can enter a number if you need to forward a phone. So if someone left the organization and you wanted to forward their phone to another person to get their calls, you could set up a call forward only and put in another person's extension. It would allow you to forward anyone who dialed their extension or their outside number to go there. Do not disturb. You already have a line like that. Mobile line is a feature that's only available if you have a 30 or a 40, the 20s do not have it, so you won't see that uh, accessible through that. But what a mobile line is, is just a key on your phone where you can then Bluetooth to your, your uh, cell phone and you can answer your cell phone calls on your desk phone. So it kind of centralizes all your inbound call traffic. If you own your own phone, a lot of people don't want to do that, but that's available to you. And then uh, account code verification you won't use. That's for special groupings called ACD, which you don't have. So that's what everything is there. And you can program a key. Most people do speed call, which is pretty common, an extension number or an outside number. So pretty easy. Let's look at incoming calls. What do they look like? So <clears throat> here comes an incoming call. You can see what it does up here. It's giving me the caller identification. This happens to be someone internally calling. Uh, 
a made up name here. Uh, but it's going to show me the name of the person internally who's calling, the extension number. It's going to tell me it's ringing in. You'll see where it used to say my phone is now uh, shows the caller ID. If it was an outside number, it would look very similar, except it would have the name of the company and the phone number instead of the extension. So it looks the same. And you can see the soft keys down below now change. There's no longer log out or redial because a call is dialing in, it offers you answer. If you hit answer and you're not wearing a headset of any kind, it's gonna answer on your speakerphone. So obviously best practice might be pick up the handset. But uh, that's what that looks like. When you answer the call, it looks like this. Here comes an outside call, just to give you an example. So now I've answered this outside call. It settles in up top with the caller identification information, the phone number, it sticks with it. Even if I get another call in, I'll have that number there. And also in the center, when, it's, when it has come in, it's given me the caller ID name and the phone number. And you can see those soft keys down below we talked about have changed. So now it's given me different options. One thing is if you're looking all the way over to the right, it's saying end call. But uh, the other things you can do is transfer. So I can hit the button that corresponds to the transfer and then dial another person's extension and hang up the phone and send it. Uh, or I can add a user. Add a user is setting up a conference call. On these phones, it's pretty nice. You can have a total of eight people on a conference call. It's seven and you, so a total of eight. And it could be a combination of internal or outside or all inside or all outside. If conferencing is a feature you think you would like, we're going to go through that, how to set it up and do one. But I would recommend that you guys kind of conference between each other internally, just so you get a feel for how easy it is. And then... Um, you know, it, you'll be ready to go when you need to use it for an outside person. Because the first time you use it, you're thinking, oh, will I hang up? Oh, no, what do I do? But uh, pretty easy once it's in play. So you can see those are features that are available to you for inbound call. Let's talk about transferring the call. So I need to transfer a call. Here comes the call in. We're to the place where we've answered the call now. So my offering is transfer, add user, or end call. So I'm going to transfer. I'll hit the little button that corresponds to transfer. Then I'll enter the extension number, or I can dial a nine, the area code and phone number and transfer it to an outside number. So if someone had called in and said, is Joe there? And Joe happens to be on the road. And I was so inclined to transfer it out to Joe's cell phone. I could do that by hitting the transfer key nine, dialing the area code and phone number. So that's that's a, an available feature. So once you put in the extension, we'll, we'll just say for this case, for our sake here, uh, you're going to dial the extension. So we hit transfer, we dial the extension number, and then you can see that it still offers transfer, trade calls, back to held. So let's talk about what's there. To complete this, we'll just hit transfer once again. That'll send the call along. It's off of my phone and it's on ringing your phone and you can pick it up or not pick it up or whatever. Um, the other features that are there are join call. So if I decided at the last minute that I wanted to, all three of us to talk, Bob and you and me, uh, it looks like Justin and Bob and me, we're all on the phone. Um, I could, rather than transfer this call, I could just join us all together. We could have a, a three-party conversation. That's basically a conference call. Uh, trade call means that I can jump back. Let's just say I hit transfer. Uh, as soon as I hit transfer, when a call comes in, it automatically puts that caller on hold. So Justin had called in. I hit transfer. I put Justin on hold, and I dial Bob's extension. So I dial his extension. Now, right now, let's just say I said, hey, Bob, Justin's on the phone. And Bob said, well, Justin with who? What company is Justin with? I could say, hold on a second. I could hit the trade call. It would take me back to Justin without transferring the call. I could ask Justin a question. I could hit trade back and go back to Bob. Hey, Bob, Justin's with ABC Company. Bob says, go ahead and send it through. I hit transfer, it completes the call. So it's a way you can toggle back and forth by using that trade call if you wanted to. Okay, back to held is a little bit different than trading, but what it does is it takes me back to the original caller, in this case, Justin. When I hit back to held, it cancels the transfer. So let's just say I hit transfer. I dial Bob's extension, Bob picks up, and Bob says, oh, I'm walking into a conference call. Can you just tell him to call me back? Well, I don't want to transfer the call at this point. I don't even want to trade it because I want to get Bob's going to hang up on me. So I'll just go back to hell. I'll say, hey, Justin, Bob just walked into a meeting. Can you call back in an hour? And then that cancels the transfer. And I could either start another transfer and send Justin somewhere else, or I could go ahead and hang up on Justin at that point. So hopefully that makes sense. But a call comes in, you hit transfer, dial the extension, hit transfer again. It sends it. 
And then everything in between, canceling the transfer is just back to hell. So I hit transfer, I dial an extension. They can't answer the call. I need to go back to the original caller and start over. I go back to held. And then I say, sorry, hold on one more second. Sometimes you use that back to held just because you made a mistake. I hit transfer, I dial the wrong extension. Maybe the old one, you forgot to put the one in there. Oops, what do I do? I hit back to held, it takes me back, I can start over. So hopefully that makes some sense. Making conference call, it's almost identical. And you could see that when we were doing that transfer, that you had the ability to conference also. So it really takes you to the same screen. It's just kind of to keep your your head straight on what you're doing. Uh, but let's look at that. So I want to make a conference call. So here comes a call in. It happens to be Justin again. And <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and instead of transferring Justin, I want to create a conference call. So this could be a call that someone Justin had called into me. I called Justin. It doesn't matter how I'm on this call. So it could have been transferred to me. It doesn't matter. So we're talking me and Justin. We're the only two on the phone, but we want to add another person in. So I can hit, hit add user. I could hit transfer also because it takes me the exact same screen and gives me the same functionality, but just keep your head straight. It helps to hit add user. So I want to add someone in. So I hit add user. At this point, exactly the same thing. I dial the extension number or I can hit nine and the area code and the phone number and uh, dial someone's phone number. Doesn't matter how I get this third person, but my intention here is to add that user so we're all three on a conference call. So once I dial that extension, I can have a private conversation with whoever I'm reaching out to, okay? As soon as I hit transfer initially, it puts Justin on hold. So Justin's on hold and he'll stay on hold until we either connect the calls together or I transfer the call somewhere else. So I can have a private conversation with whoever I'm talking to. It's say it's Bob again. Hey, Bob, uh, Justin, can you hop on the phone with me? There's a question I can't answer, whatever it is. <clears throat> then there's Bob, uh, I'm talking to Bob right here. I just hit join calls and we're all three joined together. And you can see before I join those calls, I can do the trade. I can jump back to Justin, talk to him. I can cancel it. I can hit transfer, you know, and get rid of it. But in this case, we're going to connect together. And as soon as I hit that, you'll notice that your display will say three-party conference, and we'll all be able to talk at that point. The other features that are added, <clears throat> again, you can transfer that. So even though I have these people talking together, I can hit transfer and send it to another person and get off the call completely. I can add another user all the way up till there's eight of us on the phone. I can also do a split. What split is, it's a little bit different. Split just splits everybody off onto their own line. So, so let's just say you have a four or five people on the phone and somebody is saying something you don't want them to say. I can hit split, it'll split everybody, and then I can use that trade to jump between the different people to find who said what. So very seldom used, but there it is. Also, you have the ability to leave the call. So let's just say I wanted to transfer, I have three or four parties on the call, and I want to just do an introduction, but then get off the call. Hey, everybody, thanks for joining the conference. I have another meeting to go to. I can hit leave call and that'll get me out of the call. So I'm not having to transfer it to anybody or anything like that. If there's three people on the phone, I could hit transfer, but generally transfer is gonna allow you to send it to someone else. So I'll just hit leave call and it'll allow me to jump off that call and move on to new business. A lot of times you'll use that leave call button when you're a person who's setting up outside calls for other people, you know, I could set up a call for you, hold on, here's Bob on the phone, and then I can leave the call and do whatever I'm gonna do so I don't have to stay on the conference call while you're on it. Okay, so that's how the conference works. Let's kind of look at the phone on any of the style phones you have. Uh, the buttons are exactly the same. Uh, on either side. You can see there's a keypad. This is the bottom of the phone. Uh, so we're going to start at the top on the left-hand side, and then we'll go over to the right-hand side. And believe it or not, these are kind of laid out nicely, so it makes sense. Everything over here on the left-hand side has more to do with features, things like accessing your call history, going to your voicemail, your settings, that kind of thing, where everything on the right side is more to do with your call handling. What you did see up on that soft display were things like transfer and conference, but the things missing obviously are things like mute or hold or speaker or hang up, those sort of things. So that's what we're gonna kind of take a look at. But let's start over on the first side. Let's start off with our our uh, contacts key. So this is where all our contacts are going to go. 
Um, so you have buttons that you can program, but sometimes I don't know if you want to say not button worthy, but sometimes you don't need a button for somebody. Maybe it's a project you're working with uh, somebody temporarily, or maybe you just want to keep a bigger list of contacts that you can access. You don't call them every day. You don't really need a button for them. So that's where you can house these contacts. So there's going to be several kinds of contacts. There's going to be ones that are called personal contacts. Those are going to be ones you've added in. So when you first go in, the first day you open your contacts, you're not going to have any contacts, personal contacts at all. Uh, personal contacts will be ones that you add as you go along, and you can add them two different ways. I could hit Add New, the soft key where it says Add New on there, or I could go ahead and add them in when someone calls me, and I'll show you what that looks like. So I can go into my call history, and I could add them there. But <clears throat> for our case, uh, you, this is just a manual process on this screen where I would hit add new, and it's a lot like programming one of those buttons where I would put in the name, you know, spell the name, but I could put in not only a phone number for an office, but I could put multiple contacts for it. So uh, if I wanted to see the multiple contacts, I can just continue to scroll over using the silver key to the right. So if I go over, uh, if I scroll over, uh, to the right once, it'll highlight the person I want to call on my contacts. And if I continue to go over, like I like with uh, Bertha here, I, it would show me the rest of their contact information that I did. So I could select something different if I wanted to. So kind of play with that. So on here you have personal and you have corporate if you have a 20. If you have the 30 uh, or a 40, you'll also be able to suck in all your mobile contacts off your cell phone. So if you did that key and the, you connected it to Bluetooth, it would allow you to access your mobile contacts as well. So it's kind of cool. A little bit of work, but um, they would be there and they would show up like a mobile there. <clears throat> okay, so if I wanted to dial someone, I'll just use the navigation key. I would go over to the right, highlight the person. Uh, I could scroll down. If I wanted to do it alphabetically, I could put in an A or B or whatever and look through them alphabetically. Or I can just scroll down until I find the person. It really depends on how many personal contacts you have. Okay, the other kind of contact is corporate contacts. When you get to corporate contacts, there'll be nothing there. And uh, the reason for that is uh, because you have to at least put one letter of the last name in into the search. So you would hit search and at least put an A or a B, or whatever their last name starts with. This is all driven by last name. So you have to at least put the letter, one letter of their last name. Obviously, the more letters you put in, the closer you're going to get. And then you just hit search and it'll look for all the people who match those letters, okay? So then you could use your scroll down to find, if it's all Jones and there's five of them, you can scroll down until you get to the right Jones. And then you can hit the center of the navigation key or you can hit uh, dial and you can see here what it looks like. Uh, I'll kind of show you in the call history as well. So there's your call history button, two little arrows face uh, pointing opposite directions. Uh, <clears throat> this is the same on everybody, so it's going to be a call history. It's going to be all. That's just in order of time. So whatever came in first will be the first, uh, the, the very top, and then the older ones push down. Uh, or you can separate them out by missed, outgoing, and received. And the little symbols are kind of helpful because when you're looking at all, you can't really tell if it was inbound, outbound, missed, or what. But if you look at the symbol next to it, you can kind of get an idea that, like, Bertha there is uh, – a missed call and uh, 612-8190 is a missed call. And uh, that uh, David uh, Williams there was an outbound call and Esther Crawford was a uh, uh, inbound call. So you can kind of get an idea like that, but you could separate them up just using the navigation key, scroll down, you can go to missed calls or outgoing calls or received calls. Now, <clears throat> if I scroll over to one of the people then I could go ahead and add them as a contact. So that would add them into my personal contacts. Uh, so that makes it really nice if you wanted to. And like before I was telling you, it works the same way here as well, knowing birth is part of my deal. But if I kept scrolling over, uh, it would then give me more information on their contact. The next key is your voicemail key. That's how you'll access your voicemail. Remember, four ones initially, when you press the button, It'll ask for a passcode, and that's what you are, your voicemail pin, and you'll use those four ones initially, but then it's going to take you through a tutorial, and it's going to help you set up your voicemail. So be prepared when you press that button for the first time that you're going to have to spend, you know, a, few, a minute maybe going through the tutorial to set up a new passcode, to put your name in, and to put a greeting. So make sure you have a password figured out and a greeting figured out before you hit the button. 
but that's how you'll access it on a daily basis. All these phones have little lights on the very top of it. When I show you the phone again, uh, I'll kind of show you where that is. And it'll blink when you have new voicemail messages, so you'll know uh, when your voicemail is ready to roll. So that's your voicemail key. Um, I got a sheet at the end of this where I'll go through kind of what the voicemail looks like and how it's laid out, but that's how you'll access it. This is your settings key. This allows you to access all the settings inside the phone. There's a couple things that you might uh, have some interest in. Let's look at those. Uh, these are the kind of the three big ones. Remember earlier we talked about there was a call forward on there. You could set up a button. Well, if you set up the button to turn it on and off, this is where you'll go in to set up the phone number that you want it to forward to, an extension number, an outside number. So if someone has left the organization, you can go to their phone and forward their phone to a receptionist or say you're on vacation or are on leave or something, you can forward your phone. Uh, the little Bluetooth symbol, you probably recognize that. That's if I wanted to Bluetooth my my um, cell phone to this. That's where we're talking about that button where it'll ring the desk phone and the cell phone. It only works, again, on the 30s and 40s. So if you have a 20, you won't have that feature. That's one of the extra features they have on the 30s. And then the little horn is the volume, uh, the, the kind of the ringtones uh, that are available. So let's look at each of those. Here's well, First, we'll look at the forwarding. So when you hit forwarding, all you have to do when you hit the button is put in the uh, extension number or the outside number, dialing a nine if you're doing an outside number, area code and phone number to, uh, to dial. You can do conditional forwarding only when I'm busy, only for internal and external, or only when I don't answer. You probably won't mess with those. You probably won't mess with forwarding much. Uh, it won't, if you forward, it'll never go to your voicemail. So it's a good idea probably not to touch that too much uh, unless you need to forward it to someone else. The Bluetooth one, that's to set up your cell phone. If you have a 30, if you have a 20, just ignore this part. But uh, if you have a 30 or 40 and you want to sync your cell phone up and have a button to answer it, first remember you're going to create that button by holding it, a blank key down and then choosing that, that phone button. Um, this is how you'll program your phone to connect to it. So anytime when you're within range, you have to turn on Bluetooth on your cell phone. So you got to make sure Bluetooth is enabled. And then... Um, you can hit the key there using the key. You'll turn it on. Um, you'll notice it's on because you'll see this little Bluetooth symbol show up up in the upper part of the display. I wanted to show you a few things to up here. This is if you have forwarding set up, the two little arrows. Um, the ricochet just means you miss calls, and the little tape player means you have a voicemail message. It also has a little light that blinks for you have voicemail, but we're just talking about the Bluetooth, so that's what that looks like. Um, then you'll see all the phones that are near you that are Bluetooth enabled. So you pick your cell phone, you know, wherever it is. Uh, it'll give you a little code, say, is this you on your phone? You, you, if you've ever, like, had a newer car, you know how this kind of works. It's almost identical. You're pairing it to your phone. So I would choose, in my case, maybe the S6. So I choose that. And um, then I go ahead and I hit pair. And then it'll go through its, its pairing, you know, do a little song and dance. And then when it says uh, completes, uh, connected, com successful, then I say OK. And then I have that connection to my cell phone. If I have the button, then when someone calls my cell phone, uh, it'll ring on my desk phone. I can answer it there. It can also now I can see my call history uh, of my cell phone as well as my contacts. So makes it that's a nice it can be a nice feature if you use it for work the other key you'll have here is your uh, ringtone you'll notice that the ringtones on here are all kind of sing-songy so if you don't like that or you don't like the ringtone or even if you're in an office with three or four people and you want your ring to be unique so you know when your phone's ringing when you're at the printer this is where you want to go the little horn there so uh, you can see it gives you different rings for uh, internal and external calling so if someone's calling your uh, internal just means an extension is calling you. You can change the ring from when an outside call comes comes in. Uh, all you have to do is scroll over to where you see the names, and as you scroll down, it'll play each of the ones that you want. When you have the one you want, just hit save. So it's very easy. And uh, you have to do it both for internal and external, or it's the default ring that you'll hear, which is a very top one. This is what it looks like when you... Um, uh, don't touch your, your phone for a while. This is just a screensaver. I just wanted to show you what it looked like so you knew. Um, there is a display setting within the settings that you can change that. 
to not go to screensaver until like I think it's like 55 minutes. So if you want to up it, also sometimes the displays are a little dim. This is where you'll brighten your display. So that's another feature within the settings. Okay, this is the volume button on the phone. It's volume up and down. If you pick up your handset, you're adjusting your handset volume. If your phone is ringing, just adjust the ringer before you pick up the handset. You'll see on the display, it'll say ringer volume. So you know you're getting the right one. Um, and then if you're on a headset, you can adjust your volume there. So each piece of volume is separate. You just have to activate it or have it like ringing in at the time you uh, adjust it. The other side of the phone, we're going to start at the top there and work our way down. First one is hang up. Seems like a weird key, but uh, it's really useful if you're a headset wearer uh, because, you know, and then you have an official button to hit uh, to hang up. We have a speaker and headset key on these phones um, at the very bottom, so they're separated quite a bit. But if you, like some phones, you could hit the, the speaker key and hang up, but on these you cannot. Um, it'll just go between your handset and your and your uh, speaker or your headset and your handset. So um, good note. Okay, this is your redial list. So you saw on the display where it said redial. This actually just takes you to your call history, to your uh, dialed call list or outgoing list. So if you had, you wanted to redial someone, your second person that you dialed or your third person, you could quickly get to them. That's all that is. Uh, this is your hold key. Uh, it looks like a little pause key. When you hit the little hold key, it looks like this on your display. So it will uh, put a little pause. That actually has a little action going on. It kind of fluctuates in color between white and orange uh, where the extension number is, but that's where your call will be holding. So if I wanted to place a call on hold, go grab a file and come back, then I just hit the, uh, the uh, holding button there that's lit up to recover it. Okay. This is your mute key. Uh, mutes the handset, uh, the speaker, or if you're wearing a headset, and you'll notice it lights up. It's one of the few keys that has a little light next to it to let you know it's muted or not. So if you need to sneeze or cough or say, grab me a file or something when you don't want the person on the phone here, you'll hit that little mute key. It's a toggle. Just hit it again and turn it off. And then the bottom key is your headset or speaker key. So you could use that to answer your headset calls if you wanted to. Um, or if you are just using your speakerphone, there you go. I like a lot of times just to start, if you start dialing, uh, like I want to dial an outside line, I like to leave the handset on the cradle and then start dialing first so I can hit nine and the area code and the phone number. And then when it starts ringing, I can pick up the handset. So it'll be on speaker initially. You don't have to hit a button to turn it off speaker. As soon as you pick up the handset, it goes to your handset. Okay. And then last but not least, I wanted to quickly just go through the voicemail. Uh, so everyone um, who has a voicemail, uh, mostly it'll be people, not common areas, no conference rooms, that sort of thing. Um, this is your voicemail kind of layout. And this sheet I'm sending uh, to everybody um, this week. This is a week before we cut over, by the way. Um, so uh, I'm going to make sure you have this flow sheet. Everything in the box is different ways you can access the voicemail. So from your own phone, from another person's phone, from outside, how do I dial in? It's really anytime you hear anything automated. You guys have a backdoor number. You can call into that and hit star and access your voicemail. You can also just do it by calling your own phone number. You all should have, I think everyone has a direct dial number for the most part. There's a few people who don't, but you can dial your own phone number. As soon as you hear your own voice, hit star. And then you can uh, enter your uh, passcode and be in. So it makes it pretty easy. So there's instructions there. The rest of it's just the flow of the voicemail itself. Really, the voicemail only does three things. It plays new messages. It plays saved messages. So plain messages. You can create a message from here uh, and send it out. Or you can go into your user options and change things like your greeting, your name, your passcode. So if you initially set up your voicemail and, ooh, I really hate the way my voicemail uh, message sounds, you can go back in after the fact and change it. Or you can, if you're a person who needs to change it every day, hey, it's Wednesday, I'll be in and out of the office, leave a detailed message, that kind of thing. You could do that pretty easily from here. So let's start at the top, seven. So where you see the red and it says play message and it says seven, so every time you go in, there's no great mystery. So every time you go in your voicemail, it's going to ask you, do you want to listen to, if you have new messages, it could say, would you like to listen to new messages? Would you like to listen to saved messages? Would you like to go into personal options? 
if you hit seven um, or P to play the message, uh, it'll start playing the message. It'll, it'll walk you through it. It starts playing the first message in order. And then after the message is over, uh, the options will be read to you. Uh, the options are the same as probably what you have now, which is you can get rid of the message, discard it. You can keep it, which is saving it. You can give it to another user. So if you're manning a general mailbox, you can forward those messages pretty easily to other people within the organization. You can answer it, which would call the caller identification. So if I, that's mostly used for people who travel. I'm on the phone, I'm trying to listen to my messages. Someone says, hey, call me back when you can. I can hit a button and call that person's caller identification back without having to you know try to hold a piece of paper and write down the phone number um, so pretty easy so this is just kind of an easy kind of guide to flow you through the voicemail underneath where it says play for message uh, play messages those are little cheats that the system doesn't really tell you the big one is rewind five seconds you know people always leave you messages and they say please call me at three, four, five, five, four, four. And you're like, what? So if you hit star, it'll back you up in five second increments and you can re-listen to those messages over and over. Okay. Um, the other things are like fast forward five seconds. I don't know why you'd use that. Pause for 30 second increments. I'm not sure why you would do that unless someone maybe poked their head in your office and was talking to you and you wanted to pause the message. And then 30 seconds later, it'll start playing it again. So there's that. So that's your playing. Making a message, you have two ways to do that. You can do it from your voicemail, but you can also do it by just dialing someone's extension. If they don't pick up, it goes to their voicemail. But let's just say you wanted to leave someone a message. You know they're in a meeting, or you really just don't want to talk to them, or they owe you money, or whatever it is. You just want to leave them a message, and you don't want to be bothered. You can go ahead and press 6. It'll offer this to you. It's not going to be a mystery, or the M key, it'll say. And I can go ahead and dial the person's extension number, and then it'll say at the beep, record your message i record my message afterwards i can review it i can discard it and re-record it i can append it which means i can add to the end of the message um i can go to message addressing options which means i could put little conditions to the message you know make it confidential which means i can't forward it to anyone else get a return receipt which means i'll be notified when they listen to it mark it as urgent which will put it to the front of their list and notify them they have an urgent message. And there is like a market for future delivery for some reason. But I guess if you wanted to look like you were working late, you could send all your messages out at midnight, you know. But uh, otherwise, you can record these messages and send them out. Pretty easy. Uh, you can also just do this by calling someone's extension. If they don't pick up, it goes to their voicemail. But if you ever have a need, there that is. And then user options. Again, that's changing your name, changing your greeting, changing your passcode. They do have a small distribution list you can set up if you wanted to. A distribution list is a single two-digit number that will call um, multiple phones but it's kind of difficult to set up it's kind of an older feature most people use what email now so you don't really need to do that and then there is a repeat the tutorial once you go in and set up your voicemail the first time you'll never repeat the tutorial but if you ever feel a need to you want to go in and have it walk you through setting up your passcode and your greeting your and your uh, name again you could do that so that's kind of a flow sheet i'm going to send it along okay i'm going to send an email with the link to this this is going to be put on youtube as you probably will know when you're listening to it. So I'll, along with this, uh, to Dawn, I'm going to send her uh, the the uh, cheat sheets for the phone, the cheat sheets for the voicemail, just so you guys have it. So hopefully this uh, video will help you out. It's available to you uh, to kind of listen to and get up to speed. Um, you know, sometimes it's just answer the phone, everyone's hectic, and then maybe you come back later and listen to the the. Uh, parts of the video that you need to listen to if you're kind of confused about anything. Um, but I hope it helped you out and thank you very much.